when I, when I have a circuit like this with dependent sources, there's multiple ways for me to approach a problem like this. All right, there's, there's really two ways. I can't say what's the resistance or what's the impedance looking into the network and turn off the sources, right? Why can't I do that here? Why does that not work? Why can I not turn off the sources? I got a dependent source, all right, which causes problems. Now, one thing, and this is part of the thing I suspect that also confused a number of people on the exam question. So when I look at this one here, I have a current source that depends on a voltage, all right? So a current that is 2VX, where VX is a voltage, okay? Um, so that is not a voltage source because it has a VX in it. It's a current source, and it depends on a, on a voltage somewhere. And we do that kind of stuff all the time in circuits. Like if I look at the way I model a generator or a motor, right? I have a voltage source inside of a generator that depends on the speed of the shaft. Right, so I have dependent sources were used all the time in, in modeling of these things. All right, so um, it's basically when I have these problems and I say I want to find the the Thevenin equivalent. So first of all, just to be clear, if I say the Thevenin equivalent, what I'm talking about is I want to replace this. I want to say I've got VOC and Z Thevenin like that. Here's A, here's B. The idea of this is that from the perspective of these terminals, let's call this V and let's call this I. I say these circuits are equivalent because in, in, my, in my mind, what that means is if one amp was coming out of that circuit here, one amp was, if this was one amp here and that caused two volts here, then this circuit is equivalent if one amp here causes two volts here. Right? That's, that's the idea of an equivalent circuit. From the perspective of their terminals, they are identical to each other. All right. Now, similarly, what's a Norton equivalent look like? Current source in parallel with the resistor. And I always ask you to draw those on the test because I always want to make sure that you guys can, can do that. So to say that these circuits here are equivalent is to, is to say that from the perspective of their terminals, if I have the same current flowing out, there'll be the same voltage across them. That's what it means to say that they are equivalent. So we got to make sure that we set them up to be that way. All right, so if I've got this, I said there's two ways to do it. The most common way that I think you guys probably learned is how. How do I figure out the Thevenin equivalent here? Well, I, I'm, yeah, in terms of how I solve for stuff, maybe mesh or nodal or something like that, but just in, just in general, how do, I solve, how do I approach a problem like this? If I want to figure out the Thevenin equivalent impedance and, and all that stuff, what's my approach? Find VOC and find I short circuit. Now there's another approach where I apply a test source, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to find VOC, find ISC, and then do VOC over ISC. Now the other approach is to use what we call a test source. I'm not going to do that. All right. So I'm going to say, let's just focus on one learning one method. Okay. All right. So I want to find VOC. All right. And I've labeled in here that the impedance of the inductor is V is J. And the um, impedance of the capacitor was negative J because apparently this that's so was J1 and negative J1. Okay. All right. So this guy's already in the phasor domain for me. So I want to find VOC. Now, notice what I did here. VX was labeled for me already. Okay. And then I labeled um, the voltage on this guy here. I called it VJ. All right. I labeled it so plus minus the way I did. Totally. I can do it however I want to. And then um, I'm going to approach this guy. I got a couple of different ways that I can that I can approach it. Um, I always label all the voltages across everything. So I also label the voltage across that resistor as V1. And I think that's a one ohm resistor. Yeah, everything's one ohm in this case. Okay. All right. How should I approach finding VOC? What would be a way to approach finding VOC? 
What's that? KVL. Well, so, and yeah, you're basically point, pointing me probably to go on mesh equations, right? Uh, so I'm going to do mesh analysis on this. All right. So if I do mesh analysis, I'm going to do... Now, why do I like mesh analysis here? Yeah, the first mesh is this. And I can assign the bottom mesh, this current, right? 2VX, right? So I'm going to call this guy here IA and call this guy IB like that, all right? <clears throat> now, let's do the top mesh first. Um, top mesh first. I don't have to do anything to the top mesh, do I? With my KVL. Why not? I know what the mesh current is, right? What is IA? Four. IA is equal to four. Yeah. What about IB? I know what that is too, right? 2VX. Two VX. All right, but that doesn't, that's not a number. VX is a value. So how do I figure out what IB is? How would I figure out what IB is? Find VX. Now, how can I find VX? Where is VX? VX is the voltage across that capacitor, right? So what's the voltage across that capacitor? Yeah, the current times the impedance. And I know what the current is, right? Current is IA, right? Now, wait a minute. How come I didn't include a, a mesh here? Shouldn't there be one out there? There is one, sure. But what is that current? Zero. zero, right? Why do I know it's zero? I don't have. A, I got an open circuit out there. No, I can't support any current flow, right? So that guy's not there. So basically, I got IB equals two VX. So that's two times whatever VX is. VX would be IA times negative J. Now this is where it's important to start thinking about the passive sign convention. All right. I wrote this as I times Z. I times Z because it's going, because the I is going into the plus terminal. Why is there a negative sign? Right. Because the Z is negative, right? Because the Z is negative. That's where that negative comes from, right? So it gets real tricky when I start getting impedances because sometimes the impedances them themselves have negative signs in them, right? So this guy tells me that this is basically uh, eight times negative J. Now, if I said I wanted to put that in magnitude angle form, negative eight J means what? What's the magnitude of negative eight J? The magnitude you guys should be comfortable with. Well, that'd be the square root of... Square root of 64. So it'd be eight. Right? Yeah. The magnitude of this guy would be eight. What's his angle? Negative 90. How do you know that? His negative J points down, right? This guy is zero minus eight J. So he points down. So eight negative 90. Okay. All right. That doesn't tell me VOC, does it? How do I figure out VOC? Okay, I could do KVL, right? What loop? What loop do you want to do? The right one. What's the right one? Well, so you say the right loop. Let's 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 go with that with the right loop. Okay, so what would be what would be the elements in your loop that you would do? Well, VX and VOC are definitely, that's part of a loop. That's not a complete loop, right? So, all right. So here's, so let's, let's look at this a couple of ways. So there's, I think one way you're looking at this is, so two VX is that current, right? I could call this, I don't know, VY, I guess, if you wanted to. And I can say I got zero equals negative VY negative VX plus VOC, right? You guys follow what I did there? We know what VX is. Do we know what VY is? Every time the voltage is V1, 
Uh, that node right there. What's V1? We don't have nodes. We've got meshes, right. right? All right. So yeah, I don't have a good. I don't. I don't know what VY is. So there's a couple of ways to do. Yes. Yeah, so I could. I could find out what this node is, and that would require me now to go do nodes. Um, how about looking at a loop like this guy? I could go around like this, up through here, over through here, up through there. That's, that's weird about that. Yeah. That's a loop, right? I didn't have to do it that way, right? But I did. Is there anything wrong with doing that loop? It's a loop. It's a complete loop, right? So I could totally do it, all right? Now, you got to remember, IA was going this way, all right? You guys not like me doing that? What would be the alternative approach to doing that? Well, I could have done what I said before, but I, I could have, if I, so what we said is that VX plus VY is equal to VOC. All right, we're VY, and let me, let me do it over here so it's less confusing. Let's call it, here's VY. You guys follow that? That's the basically the right side loop that I did. One problem is I said I don't know VY. What's another way I can get VY? <clears throat> How could I get that? If I did, if you guys don't like me doing, define that mesh as a mesh term. Define what is mesh term? Or like do do your thing all around that loop. That, that is equal to well, which which loop do you want to do it around? The uh, bottom. bottom loop. He's right. I could do KVL around the bottom loop, right? So I could do KVL around the bottom loop. So just in terms of what I've written here, so I've got V sub J, V one, and V Y. So help me out. What would that be? Zero equals, and again, if, plus VJ, given the way I defined it, it would be plus VJ, and then it would be minus V1 plus VY. So VY better be equal to what? V1 minus VJ, like that. That's the same thing you would have done if you did what I just said, which was to go around that weird, that funky loop. All right. But I, I can figure out what V1 and Vj is, right? Can I? So let me um let me rewrite that here. Here's I A. Uh here's I B. We called this guy Vy. So we were saying V O C equals Vx plus Vy. And we had that, what we had, Vy is equal to V1 minus Vj. All right. How do I, what is V1 and what is Vj? Let's do Vj first. What is Vj? In terms of the mesh currents that I have here, what is Vj? IB times J. IB times J. So so VJ is so VJ is minus J times IB. Okay. Now V1. What is V1? All right. So I want to be real careful about this, right? So V1 is equal to, so this is like when I'm talking class about looking at nodes, right? I said, I look at the voltage across this, this device using the passive sign convention, right? And I say the voltage divided by the impedance is equal to the current. So when I have something like this, when I'm doing the mesh method, I, I basically have two Ohm's laws that I write when I have a current like this, right? There's, there's a current that's entering the plus terminal. And in this case, there's a current that's leaving the plus terminal. Right. So if I look at this here, I'd say, all right, well, so for V1, I write it over this way. For the current entering the plus terminal, what do I have? I have R times IA. What about for the current leaving the plus terminal? Isn't there also a current leaving the plus terminal? So isn't that minus R times IB? So basically this is R 
times IA minus IB, right? So in this case, I have a current entering the plus terminal and I have a current leaving the plus terminal. So I put them together like that. What would happen if they were both entering the plus terminal? You would add them. Yeah. You would add them, right? So I'm subtracting them because of the order that they're going in. But I got to be real careful because basically what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm enforcing the passive sign convention. I got to know where the plus sign is on the voltage. All right. I got to enforce the passive sign convention. All right. So basically what I end up with is um, R, if I go back and look at my numbers, is one. All right. And we said that IA was four and IB is negative eight J. So I have one times IA is four, and then I have plus eight J, right? This is V1, and then I have minus J times IB. IB was negative eight J, all right? So this guy becomes, what, uh, four, plus 8J, what's, all right, what's this guy here? Minus one times minus one makes this guy one, right? So plus eight times J times J. What's J times J? Negative one. Negative one. So this guy becomes Four, four. Okay. This is what I'm saying. I don't, it's not to me, I don't like plugging into numbers as much. I mean, yeah, I'll get the, I'll let the calculator give me the numbers, right? I, I don't, because I've, the fact that it's four and it's not imaginary probably blows some of your minds. You're like, wow, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have guessed that either, right? I don't really care that it is. The important thing is that I know how to get through those steps to get to the end. I'll let the calculator figure out the numbers for me. Okay. Questions about how I got through that process. Yeah. So IB, IB was negative 8J, right? So I have VJ was negative J times IB. So negative one times negative one gave me one. And then J times J is, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, you're right. This is why I don't like to do numbers either, because this is where I make mistakes, right? This is actually four plus eight J minus eight. Yes. Minus four plus eight J. That's why I don't like to do numbers. Because I know that I can't add. My arithmetic's bad. Algebra's great. All right, but but anyway, you can see the numbers a lot more clearly when you when you look at it that way. It becomes a lot more intuitive too. All right, the fact that it's minus four plus eight j means nothing to me relative to it being four. Right, I wouldn't have guessed whether it was real or imaginary or whatever. Okay, questions about that? Good catch. All right, next step is to find the short circuit current. Right. All right. So for the short circuit current, so what did I have? I had this guy, let's, see, let's redraw the circuit. So I had <clears throat> negative J. I have my resistor. I got J down here. And then I got the 2VX here. Okay. And let's see, this was VX. All right, now if I'm finding I short circuit, what do I do with the terminals? Short them, right? Now I've got a couple of loops, right? So I'm gonna draw my loops like this. That's the way that I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna call this current I short circuit. And I'm gonna call this IB down here. And I call this IA up here. This is four right there. Now, again, like I did before, I'm gonna redefine 
the voltages across each of those elements. So I want to have the voltage across each of those elements because it makes it easiest for me to be able to track everything. I need I need to do that to make sure I can write passive sign conventions properly and everything. All right. So I and I'm keeping them consistent. Don't set polarities at the beginning of a problem. Don't change them as you go through. Set them and forget them. Right. And just use them for that from that point. Okay. Do I have any work to do for the upper left? Right. I A is equal to four. Okay, because I have a current source in that loop, so it's pinned at that value. Still the case that I B is what? What is I B equal to? Not quite, no. Right? What is I B equal to? I got a super match here, don't I? Right? I got a super mesh going on. Now the idea, okay, so we got we have a super mesh. What does it mean we have a super mesh? It's like having a super node, right? Okay. Well, so in the case of the super node, uh, what was the problem with the super node? So we did this in class earlier today. The super mm -hmm. node was an issue because we said in this whole setup. I don't have a way to, so basically what I said is I got at node one, or this guy's node two and node three, right? At node two here, I have I1 going in, I2 going out, I5 going out. And I said, you know, for I2, I can define that in terms of the node voltage. Do I have any way to, to relate I5 to the voltages? If I have a voltage source, there's no way to relate the current to the voltage. The same thing happens when I have a super mesh, right? If I go to my super mesh, do I have any way in that current source? Is there any way in that current source to relate voltage and current? There's no way to relate voltage and current in a current source. When I do the mesh approach, what am I writing? I'm writing KVL equations. Can I define the voltage across a current source? Yeah, I can define it, but I have no way to relate it to the current. The current through that, that current source is not related to the voltage across it. The circuit, the rest of the circuit defines that. All right, so there's a voltage, we call it a V sub Y across here. But the only way to find V sub Y was to do a KVL and have the KVL tell me what V sub Y is, right? So what it's saying is, is you know, I can't, the, the, so what I could do is I could basically do a KVL around this mesh here and around this mesh here and combine those two things. Or what I could do is just do a, do a crazy loop around what we call the super mesh. Like this. Okay. So we're going to do the super mesh. All right. Help me out with the super mesh here. I'm going to go same same way, and I'm going to do it slow, and you guys are not going to like it because I'm going to do it slow. I'm going to do it basically going around like this in a counterclockwise direction. I'm sorry, clockwise direction. And I'm going to start in the bottom corner. So I'm going to say zero equals. All right, now I'm going to do this in terms of the voltages across each element. So in terms of the way I've defined these voltages, if I'm starting down here in this corner, What's the first voltage I go through? VJ. Okay. What's the next voltage I go through? Minus V1. Then I go into which one next? Minus VX. Am I done at that point? Yeah. I'm going through the short circuit and back to where I started. So I'm done. So now what do I do? I say, okay, well, I gotta start plugging stuff in. Okay. So what's V sub J? So IB goes into the plus terminal. So I say it's IB times J. Okay. What about for Mr. V1 up there? So minus V1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to off to the side define for myself V1 and Vx. 
All right, and I'm going to use the passive sign convention. This gets awfully confusing. I want to make sure I use the passive sign convention. Passive sign convention says I get a positive voltage for a current that goes into the plus terminal, right? So help me out. What is V1? So, yeah, so V1 is going to be R times whatever current's going into the plus terminal minus whatever's current is coming out of the plus terminal. So in this case, what current's going to the plus terminal? IA, which we said is four already. And IB is coming out of the plus terminal, so we'll do it like that. All right, now why did I do that off to the side? Because that's V1. V1 is negative in that equation. So that's gonna make this negative R times four minus IB. I don't like keeping track. I don't, my brain is too small to keep track of all those minus signs. If you think yours is bigger than mine, go for it. All right. But I, I don't, I can't keep track of it. I can't do it. All right. Go slow to go fast. That's my, that's my way of thinking of this stuff. It's helpful to, to take it slow so that you, you, because there's, so, especially once you get impedances, there's so many minus signs um, and you can easily start making mistakes. Okay. That's why when you look at the like exam one, I asked you to on the first problem just write the equations down. I don't care what the numbers are. I want to see if you can actually go through the process. I will definitely there will be a problem just like that on the next exam, right? Just like problem one on the first exam. I can't guarantee you it's going to be a super mesh or super node. Maybe it's a super mesh. Maybe it's not a mesh. Maybe it's like, but it'll be something like that where I ask you to write those equations. Okay. What about V sub x? <clears throat> So it's always Z times I. What is Z? Negative J. All right. Now, what I goes into the plus terminal? I A. Is there any other currents going into the plus terminal? No. I short circuit is going out of the plus terminal. So it's a minus ISC. Now, this is why this is nasty. Now, following the passive sign convention, I got a negative sign, right? This is what's making this ugly, right? I followed the passive sign convention and I still got a negative sign because the impedance was negative, okay? But this is still Z times I, whatever the capacitor current is, right? I guess I call it I cap, All right? And because it was minus VX, What's it become in my equation up here? Plus J times four minus I short circuit. It's the point I'm trying to make to you guys. Go slow with that stuff. There's so many, see how many ways, so many different minus, there, was, there were signs that came from the KVL. That's here. There were signs that came from the KVL. There's signs that come from the passive sign convention. There's signs that come from the impedances. So I did them all separately to try to do the bookkeeping carefully, right? That's, that's my recommendation. You try to do that bookkeeping in a really careful way, all right? So you can keep track of all the signs. Now I've got two equations, but I need how many equations? So this, I'm counting this as one equation, I guess. I need another one. What, what other one do I need? Yeah, so basically, what I have here is I got a current source between two meshes. So that basically says two VX, that's the current source that we're talking about that's shared between two meshes. Looks weird because it says V, but two VX is a current. It's a dependent current source. What the heck does that mean for the, what's the units of the number two here? That's why part of it is I don't like this. It says two VX. What are the units on that number two? better be amps per volt all right you say that's a weird thing to have you, it's not now you can't go to as i say i used to say you can't go to radio shack and buy one of those you can't go to radio shack anyway you can't go to amazon.com and buy a dependent current source right you're not going to find one but you can buy a transistor and a transistor can be modeled as a dependent current source all right so these things do exist in the real world but we're not totally making this stuff up all right that thing, the units of the number two would be amps per volt. All right, so two VX equals what here? How do I relate two VX 
to the mesh currents. IB minus I short circuit, because IB is going with the arrow and I short circuit's going against the arrow. All right, so I say it's uh, IB minus ISC. Now, but that still doesn't look good, right? Because VX is another variable, but I know what VX is, don't I? In terms of the mesh currents, I already solved for that down here. So I plug in two times negative J times four minus ISC is equal to IB minus ISC like that. Now I have two equations and two unknowns. The two unknowns are IB and I short circuit. Okay. I put those together, it turns into this. All right. This these are the these are the two equations that I end up with from that process. All right. Now the reason I, I do them like this again I, I like seeing it like this because when I put them together I can easily put this into into MATLAB. I can look at the coefficients on those on those variables, plug those into MATLAB and I end up with my I short circuit is that value. Okay. All right, and we previously found what our V open circuit was, which was negative four plus eight J. Okay, now this is where I get my Z Thevenin. My Z Thevenin is VOC minus I, or divided by I short circuit, right? And I end up with negative one plus two J. So that's the impedance that I have here. Now let's say I want to draw the Norton equivalent. What would that be? I short circuit and Z seven in parallel, right? And those two circuits would be equivalent. All right. All right. Questions about how I got to here? Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's that's by this this is saying I got a super mesh here. So I got a current source between two meshes. The current source that's shared by two meshes. So basically I say the current source in this case, the current's two VX. And I say that's got to be equal to the current that's flowing with the arrow minus the current flowing against it. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay, so that, that one should be a pretty tough one to try. Um, all right, so what else do you guys want to try? Harder ones. What's that? Harder ones? Another super node. Um, we could do that. Um, I want to try, let me drop a couple of extra slides in here. I want to try something we were doing the other day. You guys were asking for, Demetrius, you said, I want to try all the ways to do whatever that first one was that I showed this guy. All right, so this was the example I had here. I call it Z1, Z2, Z3. Okay, so. A couple of things. So I, I wanted to find, in this case, all right, here's this guy. All right, let's go to back to full screen. All right. Yeah. So I think what I did to do this the other day, I said, let's let's say I want to find VOC in this circuit. Um, there. Okay. Let's just let's. And I basically what I did was I ended up saying, 
I called this Z1, I called this Z2, and I called this Z3. And I'm going to assume you guys know how to calculate those of these. Okay. I'm going to do everything in terms of those of these. So, in other words, I'm going to write this guy as VS, uh, RS, Z1, Z2, Z3, and VOC is over here. Okay. All right. So you got a couple of ways to approach this problem to find VOC. Again, we could do nodal method, I guess, but I don't want to do nodal. I want to, I want to simplify this circuit. I think what I did the other day is I did a source transformation, I think. Right. I don't want to do source transformation this time. Give me, give me another way to do it. Other than mesh and nodal. Yeah. Two voltage divisions. All right. He wants to, he wants to go big. All right. How would I do a voltage division here? You asked me this in the office hour for like thirty minutes. Um. All right. How, how, so so tell me, how would I do it? I can break the circuit right here, right? Right. And I can make an equivalent circuit for everything to the left of that line. In other words, I can turn this into some other circuit, I don't know, called VOC1, Z7 and 1. And then put Z2 and Z3 here. That's the whole idea of an equivalent circuit. Basically, at the point of where I drew that line, from the perspective of that line, everything to the left is equivalent to everything in the circuit above it to the left. So, in other words, I can break the circuit right there at that point, unloaded. So in other words, take Z2 and Z3 off and make a Thevenin an equivalent. So, all right. So what I'm doing is I'm saying for the circuit on top, I said if I had VS and I had RS and I had Z1, I have this circuit here. Okay. The voltage right here would be what I called VOC1. And then I could find the Thevenin and equivalent impedance looking in there. You guys with me? The whole idea here is, is that from the perspective of the terminals that I've drawn right here, everything on the left side of those terminals is equivalent to everything on the left side of the terminals of this circuit. Right? Wow. They're equivalent to each other. So I can keep making replacements. Yeah. Well, I haven't, well, so I haven't, it's, you're asking a good question, but in this, in this case, I haven't started combining anything yet, right? What I'm, what I'm just doing is I'm saying, I want to break the circuit here. So I would literally make a break right there and right there. So these, it's like I took these resistors off of it and said, all right, I just want to look at everything to the left side of that line. I want to replace everything to the left side of that line with my Thevenin equivalent, and then I'm going to proceed with my analysis. Now, what's nice about this, if I look at that circuit right here, all right, the one that I drew right here, so this, these two circuits are in the, the one at the top and the one at the bottom. These two guys are entirely equivalent to each other. They behave exactly the same, okay? If I, if I said, okay, how could I figure out VOC in this circuit? How could I do it? How could I do VOC for this circuit? Find the, find the current, All right? So what's the current? It would be VOC one divided by what? Those impedances there in that circuit, what would, I, what would I consider the impedances in that circuit to be? 
Are they in series, parallel? Series, series right? So I got them in series. So I'd say VOC, the current in that circuit, let's call this I, right? I is equal to VOC1 divided by Z7 and 1 plus Z2 plus Z3. And VOC, how do I get from that current to VOC? Multiply by Z3, right? So I got basically this guy is Z3 divided by Z7 and 1 plus Z2 plus Z3 times VOC1. It's a voltage divider, right? And a voltage divider. So what I have to do is I got to figure out what is VOC1 and what is Z7. Okay, so looking at this circuit here, so here's the circuit we had. We had RS, we had VOC1, oh, sorry, VS, and we had Z1 here. Like that, all right? So what's the open circuit voltage of that circuit? How do I figure out that? Isn't this also just a voltage divider? Right? So what is this? This so VOC1 here would be what? Z1 over Z1 plus RS times VS. Like that. All right. So I got that result. What about the seven and equivalent impedance? How do I find that? Now this gets to your question. How do I find this impedance? Do I look left or do I look right? So how do I find the seven and equivalent impedance? Turn off the source, right? First thing is if I'm going to find Z7 and I got to turn off the source. So if I'm turning off a voltage source, what's it become? Short. All right, so I got R sub S and I got Z1. Now, some of you guys would say that they are in series. Some of you guys would say they're in parallel. All depends on how I'm looking at it. From the perspective of a, this is the way, the way you think of Z7 is you say, okay, from the perspective of a current that's flowing into the terminal and flowing back out again, that current splits between those two things, doesn't it? These two are in, from the perspective of a, so, so basically what you say is from the perspective of a source that would be connected right here. Those two guys are in parallel. If you say, well, if there's nothing connected out here and there was some current that was flowing between those two, then they would be in series with each other. But that's not the question we're asking. We're saying from the perspective of a, of a current flowing into the terminals and then back out of the terminals, what's the impedance? So from the perspective of a source connected to those terminals, they have the same voltage across them, and they are in parallel. Okay? So you would say Z7 is Z1 in parallel with RS, like that. Okay. And so if you wanted to, you would say, all right, this is Z1 in parallel with RS. And this guy would be Vs times Z1 over Z1 plus Rs. Again, for me, when I'm trying to gain intuition on these things, this, this approach to me is a lot simpler than doing nodal and mesh, because nodal and mesh, I just get left with two equations. I don't, I can't see what's happened in the circuit as well. But I don't try to jump to numbers right away. I try to keep it symbolic so I can kind of make sure that I understand what's happening. All right. Questions about that approach? There's, there's different ways of, you know, again, we did in class, we did a source transformation. Um, you didn't even have to do a source transformation if you didn't want to. You could have said, instead of a source transformation, you could have said, what's the total impedance seen by V sub S? And that would be, how would I do it that way? So if I had... Here's RS, here's Z1. Here's Z2. Here's Z3. 
and then let's say I want to find VOC. I said what I could do is I could find what's the total current leaving here. What's this current? IS. What's IS? How can I find IS? What's that? Without, Without using a source transformer. Yeah, well, find the total impedance that's seen by that particular guy. Now, where would I start collapsing it to, to simplify the impedance? I would start all I would start as far away from the source as I can and start collapsing it down. So what do I see about Z2 and Z3? They're in series. Right? Why are they in series? They got the same current going through. Right. Don't look at the picture and try to think about how they're connected. That's the, that's the biggest problem I see most people make is they look at the picture and try to figure it out from the picture. Think about it electrically. They've got the same current flowing through them, so they must be in series. So what I do is I say, all right, well, this guy becomes VS, RS, and then I have Z1 here, and then I have... Um, one box that is Z2 plus Z3. What's the next simplification that I can do? What's, what's this? Okay. Z, Z1 and Z2 plus Z3 are in parallel with each other, right? Why are they in parallel? Okay, you got the same voltage across them, right? So basically now the circuit becomes Vs. RS and this is Z1 in parallel with Z2 plus Z3. <clears throat> now I can say that IS has to be equal to what? VS divided by the total impedance of that circuit, which is RS plus Z1 in parallel with Z2 plus Z3. Right. That's the total current here. And then I can say what? Well, I could do this a couple of different ways. I could figure out the voltage across the parallel combination. I could use a current divider. I got all kinds of different ways of doing this. All right. Are you guys following that? Okay. All right, and basically it's it's always sort of like this. First couple of problems on the current homework are like that. Next homework, more circuits like this, right? Um, and then I can't remember, I have to go back and look at the syllabus. What day did I say was the exam? Is it the, thir the 13th? Yeah. So the exam was two weeks away. Friday the 13th. Yeah. Can you what? Sure. <laughs> you hold us all hostage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>